Hey, Year 10s. I uh, hope you're all doing well. Um, for those of you who are, well, I guess I'm going to see some of you on Zoom today. And for those of you who are sitting in class physically with me, hey, I'm waving to you hopefully in class. And for those of you who are hanging out at home, I'm waving to you right now. I'm just behind my computer. So today we're going to talk about factorizing. Uh, the other day we finished off talking about a highest common factor and we're going to extend that now. So if you think about it to start, um, factorizing and expanding, they are inverse operations, which means that they're opposites. So they're inverse operations, inverse operations. They're inverse operations. Other examples of inverse operations are things like adding and subtracting. They're opposites of each other. Multiplying and dividing, opposites of each other. A square root and a squaring are inverse operations. They're all examples. So factorizing and expanding are also an example of an inverse or opposite operation. So to give you kind of um, a big example of that, let's see if I can erase this away pretty quick here. So to give you an example of this, it hopefully kind of makes some sense. Um, I'm going to show you, I'll move forwards and I'll move backwards. I'm using the same idea. So if I gave you to start, if I had three um, X bracket two minus um, four uh, Y, if I give you that, I told you to expand. Well, then that would be what's three times three X times two minus four Y times three X. And I know I'm kind of slapping things together, but um, three X times two makes six X. 4y times 3 is 12xy. So that's expanding. The opposite of that is if I gave you 6x minus 12xy, and I told you to factorize it, what you'd have to do is you'd have to think, well, what uh, what kind of factors do 6 and 12 have in common? And you know, they're both divisible by 3, so you'd write 3. And you'd also know that there's an X in both of them. So you could see that they both have a pronominal of X in them. And that's another thing that we could factor out. So we could take three X out. We would then draw brackets. So we'd make brackets. Um, factorizing makes brackets and expanding gets rid of brackets. So the next thing I do is I would divide what's six divided by three. So I have to look at what is six divided by three. And that gets me uh, two. And then my I divide x out of there. And then what is negative 12 divided by 3? And that gets me negative 4. I'm able to factor that x out, and I'm left over with the y. You notice that they basically get me to the exact same place. The end is the beginning of the one, and the beginning is the end of the other. So they are the opposite of each other. Just like if I were to say what's uh, 3 times it equals to 12 and I could also say that 12 time, uh, divided by 3 is equal to 4 and that's kind of another way of thinking about um, expanding and factorizing. We spelled with a Z at home so I'm struggling to make sure I spell with an S right now. All right so that's kind of a quick overview. I'm going to stop talking about expanding at the same time, and I'm going to focus on um, factorizing now. So I'm going to do a couple examples of just factorizing, and I'm going to stop, you know, looking at um, expanding. So that way we're able to focus and kind of keep on topic a little bit better. So for my first example, we'll start simple. I'm going to ask you to factorize 6a um, minus 15b. So the first thing I do is I start thinking, well, are they even numbers? So I look at 6 and 15, so I look at 6 and 15, I think are the even numbers. No, they're not. So they're not divisible both by 2. Well, I see 15 is um, a multiple of 5. Um, is 6 a multiple of 5? No. Well, what about, you know, I know 6 is divisible by 2. It's also divisible by 3. Is 15 divisible by 3? Yes, it is. So we can divide 3 out of both of them. So write 3. Next, I look to see if the pronumerals, if they share any pronumerals. And there's no shared pronumerals. So I can close my bracket. And what is 6a, or what is 6 divided by 3 equal to? 
6 divided by uh, 3 is equal to 2. I then write my pronumeral of a. What is negative 15 divided by 3? Negative 15 divided by 3 is negative 5. And then again, I write my pronumeral of b, factorized. Yeah, that's right, you get to say that after you factorize. Um, so let's try another one. Let's try um, 4x plus 20. So start out. Let's think of um, different numbers that they share in common. So one, they are both even numbers, which I could tell you right now that they both have the common factor of 2. But we want the highest common factor, not just any common factor. We want the highest possible one so you get the biggest factor out of this expression. So I know two is possible. Is four divisible by four? Yes, it is. Is 20 divisible by four? Yes, it is. Because that is true, we can write four as our first thing we're gonna factor out. Next, we see if they share pronumerals, which they do not share pronumerals, so we cannot divide them out, so I draw my bracket. What is four divided by four? It's one, so one x. And what is 20 or positive 20 divided by 4? It's positive 5. Now, if I want to write this in best form, you don't write your 1s, don't uh, forget. So it would be 4x plus 5. And that would be the um, correct way to write that. So that's another example. Let's see if I can fit one more in before I have to erase all this. So let's try this one. Uh, I like this one. It's 8y minus uh, 12xy. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to think what are numbers that we um, that they share as common. So they're both even numbers. I know that eight and twelve are both even numbers, so I could divide it by two. That's definitely a common factor that they have is two. Is it the largest or the highest common factor? Well, I'm fairly sure eight's divisible by four, and twelve is divisible by four. I can't think of any higher numbers. I know that twelve is not divisible by eight, so that's not possible. So I'll write a four to start. The next thing I look is I look to see, do they have common pronumerals? I see they both have a y in them. So I can also divide y out of the both. So I'm going to divide 4y out of the both of them. So what's 8 divided by 4? I'm going to do that first. What's 8 divided by 4? That's 2. y divided by y. I've taken the y out, so it's just 2. Next, I'm going to do what's negative 12 divided by 4. Um, that's negative, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. The y is divided out, and I'm left with x, and that is factorized. All right, let's try one more. I think I could fit one more in here. Let me try one more. Let's see if I can fit one more in. Um, well, you know what? Let's erase. I've got two more examples. So I got, if I have two more examples, then I can definitely show you guys the two more examples in the room we have. Okay, so last two examples. I'll try to make my sheet nice and clean. It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be all right. Okay, there we go. So, ooh, I don't even know how to do that triangle. That's cool. Um, so the next thing we'll do is we'll try um, 4x squared minus 10x. So let's start out with the numerals. So I see that they're both even numbers to start. So I see my 4 and my 10 are both even. So I know for sure I can divide 2 out of them both. Can I divide 4 out of the, both of them? I can't divide 4 out of 10, so I know it's just 2. So right, 2. Now we look at the pronumerals. Do they have common pronumerals? Yes, they both have x in common, so I can divide one single x out of the both. So what's 4 divided by 2? 4 divided by 2 is 2. Next, if I have x squared divided by x, that's here's a way of thinking about it, if you want a little bit of a thought bubble. If you have x squared, which is x times x divided by x, these two x's cancel out, and I'm just left over with one single x. That would be 2x. What's 10, negative 10 divided by positive 2? That's negative 5. And again, my x's I've divided out, so it's just 5. Again, you could think of it this way. I had an x on top, but I had an x on the bottom, because I'm dividing. The x's cancel out to make 1. All right, so that's that one factorized. And we'll do one last example. This is negative 10 x squared um, minus 18 x. Beautiful. So let's think about factorizing the first to begin. So the first thing is we'll look at the um, numerals. Number one, they both have a negative, 
and especially the first term is negative, so we're going to have to make what we factor out a negative. Because the first term is negative, we're going to make what we factor out negative. Number two, the numerals. 10 is even, 18 is even. So I definitely can divide 2 out of the both of them. Um, I know 10 also has 5 as a factor. 5 cannot be divided out of 18, so I think we're pretty much stuck with negative 2 as our factor. Now let's look at our prone numerals before we go any further. Let's see if they share any prone numerals, and they both share x in common. So I can take negative 2x and factorize it out or factor it out. So it's negative 10 divided by negative 2. A negative divided by negative makes a positive. 10 divided by 2 is 5. x squared divided by x is just x, similar to what I showed you right over here. Finally, what's negative 18 divided by negative 2? That's going to be positive 9. And x divided by x just leaves me with 1. And there it is, factorized. 5, that looks like an s a little bit, but 5x plus 9. And there is a quick example of how to factorize. I hope you're all doing well, and I hope that helps you uh, do your practice today. Take care. Bye.